welcome back to another video here on free will photos today we're just going to go over the fundamentals of editing inside of on one photo raw 2024 now some of the things that i'm going to cover today you'll be able to do inside of older versions of on one but i am going to be using brilliance ai which is one of those new features is only found in 2024 if you'd like to pick up the 2024 version consider using my coupon code free will photos 20 it'll save you a little bit of money when you check out and you'll be able to get a great piece of software come along and follow the fundamentals so let's go ahead and dive into the computer and see what those fundamentals are so here we are inside the computer and one of the first fundamental things that i like to do with my photos whenever i'm in on one 2024 is use brilliance ai i recommend that everyone at least turns it on sees what it does to their image and then turn it off if it doesn't work right the first fun, first fundamental that i would share with everyone is hit that brilliance ai button and let's see what happens so as on one thinks itself through this is what brilliance ai uh pushes back to me and i'm kind of okay with this let's hit our backslash key uh i think that this is okay i think that it still needs a little bit more uh drive and we're going to get into that but once you turn on Brilliance AI, you can kind of fine tune it by pushing this amount slider. So maybe I want more of that Brilliance AI look into the image. Um, and you know, I'm at 111. Don't worry about numbers when it comes to Brilliance AI. I just want you to pay attention to the photo, pull sliders, see what happens and go from there. Once that's done, what I like to do is minimize Brilliance AI and click on tone and color because this is a remote control to your tone and color section, all right? The Brilliance AI tool that says tone amount is actually controlling your tone amount, and then the color amount is doing exactly what it sounds like, adjusting your color amount. But both of those sections are actually found in here. Now, when Brilliance AI says that it's adjusting tone and color, or tone, it's actually adjusting tone and structure, okay? That's important to know. And then the color one is adjusting just the color section here. What I do whenever I turn on Bruins AI is I look at the photo and then I open up tone and color and I look at the tone settings and I say, okay, what did Bruins AI just do to my photo? And do I like it? Because if the answer is yes, I do like it, then go for it. But if I don't like it, then it's like, okay, what don't I like that it did to my photo? And this is very important. You got to get your exposure set the way that you want it before you can start stylizing. And that's why I recommend starting with Brilliance AI. Well, in this particular image, in my mind, I want this to be like a faded old timey looking photo because this is like an old timey looking building. So I'm going to go ahead and change my camera profile. This is only available if you shot raw. I do recommend that everyone shoots raw plus JPEG. Memory cards are really, really inexpensive for some high capacity or high storage capability cards. So really, I think that storage is not a problem anymore. Just shoot raw plus JPEG if your camera allows for it. Uh, and it gives you opportunities like this where you can choose your camera profile. I think camera or I'm sorry, on one portrait is the best option. So for my vision. I'm going to go ahead and select on one portrait. And what that does is it just makes the overall photo a little bit brighter. And I like that. And I haven't had to touch any of my tone and color adjustments over here because this camera profile is just working with the raw data and it's modifying the pixels to do whatever it needs to do to make it render brighter. Okay. But I still have complete control over my exposure and everything else that I have here. What I need to do is, because I'm good with the way that this is set, but I need to modify certain areas of my image. And that's called local adjustment. And this brings me to my next fundamental, which is going to be the local tab. If I click add adjustment, you're going to see that it does nothing. And that's just because the mask is pure black and it's not actually revealing the adjustment of minus one exposure, as you can see here, anywhere on the image. But if I were to paint like that and turn it on, you can see that it starts to modify the image and change the adjustment. Now, what I want to do is really get a hold of the sky. And I am going to come up to my menus here and I'm going to click on mask. 
and then I'm going to click mask sky. Now this is only appropriate if you have a sky to mask and if you are constantly masking skies, it may be the right thing to do is to set up a keyboard shortcut, but that's personal preference and that's more of a power tip. I want to stay more uh, overview level. I'm just going to click mask sky because that's the easiest way for me to get a hold of the sky and make the edit that I want to. Now, mind you, what it's going to do is select the sky and then that's going to allow me to just that er area of the photo. It copied, or I'm sorry, it masked the bottom section of my image. I'm going to click the invert option over here, and that's just gonna give me the opposite of what it masked originally. Whenever you use a mask, uh, the AI driven mask, I always recommend feathering just a little bit, uh, but I don't wanna feather it too much because I do want it to be pretty fine around these branches. I'm going to hit the letter O and as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job at selecting just the sky that minus one exposure, not the thing that I want. I am just going to pull down on the highlights. Uh, maybe not too much. I'm going to push up on the whites because I, I feel like the whites should be uh, pretty white, but maybe I do need to. And you know, your mileage will vary with the image that you're working on. Um, I think that that looks pretty good. I'll pull down on my coolness or my temperature slider just so I can get some of those blues in there. Maybe even vibrance it up a little bit and let's saturate it. I don't know. We'll go like that. We'll say that that's good. I could spend a lot of time, but I don't want to make this a very long video. I just want to get you up and running using uh, on one and local adjustments is a huge part of being able to fundamentally edit a photo. And if you're finding value in this content, don't forget to smash the like button. Let's go ahead and hit uh, add adjustment again. And this time I want to darken this bottom section of the image. I'm gonna hit the letter M on my keyboard to get the masking bug. And I am just going to click down here. Now this ended up masking the top of the image. I'm gonna hit invert again. And this is going to get me to the bottom of the image. This is where I think it should be. It darkens that area and I'm bringing the focus into the main subject, which is this house. I'm just going to pull up on the exposure here a little bit because I don't need that much of a negative exposure, but I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time trying to correct that. Now it's time to really start stylizing the overall image. This is also a good time to point out that if you wanna use a preset, this is the point that I would recommend starting to add presets because they won't impact your local section or your develop section they're only going to add into your effects section. So if I wanted to go black and white on this particular image, I could do that. Um, I'm just trying to find one that may work out pretty good. All of these are making me lose detail in the sky, so I would have to go back and rework that sky. This one doesn't, but uh, you know, maybe something like a cool ocean. But I'm actually going to create my own style, even though this does look pretty cool. Uh, in fact, you know what? I like this one. So let's say you find a preset that you like. I'm going to click that. It's going to add. If I click on local, you can see I still have my two local adjustments here. And if I click on tone and color, everything is still set the exact same way in tone and color. And this is the reason why you want to start there and then start to stylize. However, if I come over to effects, I can actually turn each of these off and start building up my own look. So maybe I like the bleach bypass, maybe I don't. So I could turn that off, turn on tone enhancer. I actually like what tone enhancer is doing to this image and then split tone. Okay, I like what split tone is doing. I think it's a little too blue. So maybe I'll try one of these other presets. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. What about warm? Yeah, now that one I like. Once you find something that you like, one of the power tips, not necessarily a fundamental, but it, it is a power tip, especially when you get to editing, so you don't have to remember every single thing that you ever liked on an image. You can click on this thing called snapshots and you can click new snapshot. And I'm just going to call this uh, effect stack. You could call this whatever you want. It doesn't matter. What does matter is if I go back to the original, this is the original. You'll see that there's nothing that happened to this image. This is purely how the image came into on one. But if I click effect stack one, it's going to take me back to the edit that I made because I know that effect stack one has all of the local and the develop edits that I made. I'm going to start back over here, 
but this time I'm just going to hit this little reset icon that's going to get rid of all of those effect stacks, but it leaves me with my local adjustments as well as my develop settings. So I don't have to redo those. That's the power of using snapshots. And now I can style a different look into my photo. And the first thing that I'll do, because I'm going to style this photo, I know what I want to do or how I want it to be. I'm going to click on curves. This is going to give me the opportunity to pull up on my blacks here and kind of give this a faded contrasted look. Now I'm going to go pretty far just to exaggerate the look in this video. However, you choose to make your images purely up to you and however you choose to work. This is how I feel like making this particular look. So now that I have that set the way that I want it to be set, uh, the next thing that I need to do is probably throw a vignette on here. And one of the cool tools inside of on one photo raw is this thing called the vignette tool. So I can click vignette and I can just click big softy. And that usually does a pretty good job. Uh, I can increase the size or decrease the size to really focus into the center of my image. What if it's not where I want it to be? I can click on this little cursor or a crosshair thing and I can drag my vignette around to the place that I want it to be, which is on this particular house or building. And now what I can do is uh, work with the roundness to see how I want that to shape up on the house. Um, and I think that that works out pretty good. If it's too much, then I can just pull back on the opacity, but I think I'll leave it like this. So this is what I walked into the editing bay with, and this is essentially the final edit. So there's really only three fundamentals. The first one, develop everything in your image globally. The second one is to go into the local adjustments and develop specific areas of your photo. And then the third one is to add style to your image. Now, there's a lot of different things and nuances in each one of these steps that I didn't cover in today's content. But if that's something you want to learn more about, then consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also pay attention to the videos that I'll be releasing in the near future that will help get into the nuance of each of these fundamentals. So that way you can edit your photos and get them out into the world. I'd love to hear your comments or your questions down in the comment section below. And so next time I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.